This one is on factorial designs. A little bit more complex design, and I, I will try, as I did in the last one, I'm going to give you an interesting topic on which to do this. I use pictures, and I manipulated them a little bit. In this case, as you can see, I've got a picture of me in the upper left side, and then using the magic of hair mixer, I put a little hair on myself. And so uh, what I did was I played around with the idea that one of these guys is attractive and one of them is ordinary. Uh, how this hair color affected our perceptions. We know that attractive people are afforded all kinds of advantages in, in our society. However, did you know, there are some situations in which being attractive actually works to your disadvantage. And the situation I'm going to look at is this. If you are accused of a crime, okay, so here's one of my upcoming independent variables, type of crime. If you're accused of a crime, not surprisingly, attractive people tend to get uh, lower sentences. So well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to move things around a little bit because I'm going to look at another thing. All right, so I guess I'm going to look at attractiveness, and we've got the ordinary guy here. I'm gonna, now I'm going to move this around because I'm going to create a new design here. And here's the attractive guy. So attractive people, lower length of sentences, unless they use their attractiveness in the committing of the crime. So, for example, if you, instead of a typical crime, which will use a robbery, what if the crime was a swindle? In other words, you, you are a man, in this case, let's say, and you, use, you uh, swindle a somewhat older woman, let's say, out of her money by pretending to like her. Now, in that case, if you are attractive, you will get a longer sentence as a result, right? Because you used your attractiveness, and that's where we sort of, you know, there's, there's also, of course, a certain hidden envy about pe people who are attractive. And so when we have a chance, sort of tied into how we like to see the mighty fall, right? Where, where that kind of thing, which uh, I'm sure you're familiar with as well. Um, <clears throat> so if you're attractive, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a copy of Mr. Attractive here. Actually, I think he's, I think I called him Mr. Swarmy in the previous episode, but whatever. So now I have a four condition experiment. All right. So I'm going to bring subjects in, give them a picture to look at of a person who committed a crime. And this is, an, this is a between subjects design, so you don't know that there are four conditions and two different looking people. You just come in, you see one picture, you read about the crime that that person committed, and then I ask you to um, you know, assign a sentence. How long should the, uh, this person spend in jail? And probably I give you some guidelines because uh, young students may not know what is typical. But within there, I'm sure I'm, go I'm going to allow students to uh, get plenty of room uh, you know, to, to decide on the length of the sentence. So it's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit more complicated, I suppose, than, than the previous design because there are all kinds of possibilities here. So I'm going to give you some possible outcomes for each of these um, conditions. And again, that is the dependent variable is the length of the sentence as measured in months. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. Here's some hypothetical results. Um, here we have it we, for condition number one up upper left. Okay, ordinary looking guy commits a robbery. I'm going to say that uh, they're going to my hypothetical subjects are going to give this person 5.1 uh, on average months in jail. Okay, and hopefully I've got a good number in there, 20, 30 students, optimally, somewhere in there. So I've got 30 times 4, I've got 120 subjects. So already, you can see you know, a factorial design is going to require more subjects to do. Okay, so uh, here's uh, the other situation, top right. Ordinary looking guy, but he commits a swindle. And so now, I'm going to say that the subjects are going to give, on average, a little higher uh, number of months in prison, 6.4 months. Okay, interesting that 
That's that's I, I say that because I you know probably swindles people would sympathize with someone being victimized maybe in a robbery it depends upon the description uh, in the robbery there you know it may be possible for the person to get back what was lost through insurance but a swindle is a you know a little bit more of a a, a painful crime so we'll we'll say that probably the um, amount, number of months in jail is a little higher. Okay, so that's what happens here for Mr. Ordinary. All right? Now, what happens for Mr. Attractive? Well, let's go with robbery. Now, if it's a robbery, I've said before that being attractive works in your favor. And so I'm going to say, if previous research supports me, that you that subjects would give an attractive guy a uh, less amount of time in jail. So I'm going to give them a mean of 2.2 months. And that would go along with the research, as I say. However, again, if the research is right, it's going to look like this. If you lower right-hand corner, attractive guy who commits a swindle. Now I think the subjects are going to get out there, you know, some of that uh, attractiveness envy. And I think that they are going to give that person a longer amount, the longest amount of time in jail, 10 and a half months. All right, so more conditions. We got more data here. Now, how do you analyze this? I mean, because uh, if, I mean, I've described it as we've gone along, but if you were to just look at this, you might not say, oh, it's obvious what's going on here. And as we get more subjects and more conditions, it, it does become less obvious what's going on. Now, this, by the way, is a two by two factorial design, right? And that's pretty straightforward. There are two independent variables, two conditions, uh, two levels of each. I could look at a third thing. For example, these are all pictures of, of myself. These, this, these are obviously the gender here is male. What if I were to take these four conditions and reproduce them another, another time here? Take all four of these. What if we looked at gender? So does this same pattern occur if the um, the robber or the swindler is female, or is it even stronger? I mean, what what are the reactions of subjects to a description of a, a crime and attractiveness if the robber swindler is female? If I were to do that, I would have a two by two by two factorial design, and that's when things really get complicated. And that's when you, you've got to uh, put things on a graph, which we'll do in just a minute. First, the, uh, just to show you a little bit of the analysis that goes on here, one thing I would do is I would average across the, uh, one of the independent variables here, that of attractiveness of the criminal. All right? So if I smash together the robbery and the swindle, in other words, I average 5.1 and 6.4, I'd get an average of 5.8 months in prison. And then if I smash together these two, and I just looked at attractiveness, and um, it would be kind of funny, right? Because I would see, I would average together 2.2 and 10.5, and I'd get an average of 6.4, which if you look at that, and by the way, this is called the main effect of attractiveness. If I looked at these averages, and I forgot about crime, or type of crime for a minute, 5.8, 6.4, I mean, it looks almost like attractive people get more time in jail, although 6.4 is not that much higher than 5.8. It almost looks like, if you look at this data, that, um, you know, there's no difference, that attractive people are not afforded uh, less time, right, in jail. So that's kind of funny, um, if you look at that sort of data from just that one main effect. All right, but let me oops, let me move this back. There we go. Um, but we can do the same thing with the um, attractiveness. We can sort of collapse across that. If I average 5.1 under robbery and 2.2, these two groups, in other words, 30 subjects here and 30 here, I would get a mean of 3.7. And if I did the same thing on the these two columns on the right, swindle, Attract, swindle ordinary and swindle attractive it's going to mean of 8.5 now I'm looking at what's called the main effect for crime so these outside means are called main effects 
And here it becomes clear that swindlers get more time in jail than do robbers. Robbers. Or just rubbers. <laughs> okay, so is that what's going on? Or is there something more subtle going on? Does it look like simply that if you swindle, you get more time in jail than if you just do a robbery? But if you're attractive or not, it doesn't really matter. Well, that's what it sort of looks like if you look at it this way. But if you were to plot the data, and of course, you would have to perform an analysis of variance. Okay, and that would be your statistical technique. Hang in there. Uh, we get to the interesting part here, although I guess I've already given it away. Uh, this would be uh, hypothetical results. All right, effect of attractiveness and type of crime on length of sentence. That's my lengthy, scientific-sounding title. On the bottom is one of the independent variables. In this case, I'll go with type of crime, robbery, and swindle. Over here on the, we always put the dependent variable on the left y-axis. And as you can see, what this suggests is that if it's a robbery, the bluish here are ordinary-looking people. Um, if it's a robbery, then ordinary people get longer sentences than attractive people, the red. But if it's a swindle, then the red, the attractive people, spend a longer time in jail. And it's actually better. One of the things that uh, you'll learn in doing research is that if the lines cross, so if I were to do this exact same thing as a line graph, it would look like this. And, <clears throat> excuse me, any crossing lines indicate an in a significant interaction. Well, an interaction, the analysis of variance would tell you whether or not it was significant. All right, so, you know, that's the story. It does get, we get a little bit more complicated here, but as usual, psychologists do the most fun research. At least, that's what I think. Okay, <clears throat> so there you go. That's episode 52 of the Psych Files.